Hi everyone, I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth from the Seeds of the Word community and I want to welcome all of you that are joining us this Thursday, August 13th, in the 19th week of Ordinary Time, to pray with sacred scripture and to do like to Divina today. For the first reading, we will be reading the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 12, verses 1 to 16. Then for the responsorial psalm, Psalm 78, verses 56 to 62. And the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 18, verses 21 to 36, and the end and the beginning of chapter 19, verse 1. So, Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 18, until the chapter 19, verse 1. So, let's continue our reading of the prophet Ezekiel. So, Ezekiel, chapter 12, verses 1 to 16. The word of the Lord came to me. The son of man, you dwell in the midst of a rebellious house, who have eyes to see, but see not, who have ears to hear, but hear not, for they are rebellious house. Therefore, son of man, prepare yourself an, ex an exile's baggage, and go into exile by day in their sight. You shall go like an exile from your place to another place in their sight. Perhaps they will understand, though they are a rebellious house. You shall bring out your baggage by day in their sight, as baggage for exile. And you shall go forth yourself at evening in their sight, as men do must go into exile. Dig through the wall in their sight, and go out through it. In their sight you shall lift the baggage upon your shoulder and carry it out in the dark you shall cover your face that you may not see the land for I have made you a sign for your for the house of Israel and I did as I was commanded I brought out my baggage by day as baggage for exile and in the evening I dug through the wall with my own hands I went forth in the dark carrying my outfit upon my shoulders in their sight. In the morning the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, has not the house of Israel, the rebellious house, said to you, What are you doing? Say to them, Thus says the Lord God, This oracle concerns the prince in Jerusalem, and all the house of Israel who are in it. Say, I am a sign for you, as I have done, so shall it be done to them. They shall go into exile, into captivity. And the prince who is among them shall lift his baggage upon his shoulder in the dark, and shall go forth. He shall dig to, through the wall and go out through it. He shall cover his face, that he may not see the land with his eyes. And I will spread my net over him, and he shall be taken in my snare. I will bring him to Babylon, in the land of the Chaldeans, yet he shall not see it, and he shall die there. And I will scatter toward every wind all who are around about him, his helpers and all his troops. I will bring unshadowed the sword after them, and they shall know that I am the Lord, and I despair them and I disperse them among the nations, and scare them through the countries. But I will let a few of them escape from the sword, from famine and pestilence, and they may confess all their abominations among the nations where they go, and may know that I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord here uses Ezekiel as a sign to the people of Israel. The Lord says, Son of man, is the way that the Lord, that God calls Ezekiel. You dwell in the midst of a rebellious house. They have eyes and do not see, and they have he ears and do not hear. So the Lord is saying, you live in the midst of this people, there is, there is rebellious, because I sent so many prophets and they did not listen to me. So I will use you as a sign for them. 
and God told Ezekiel what he was supposed to do to be assigned. So to prepare him, a baggage to prepare his things for exile and walk in the city and the day and the night to show the people of Israel that they were going to exile. And the Lord says, when they ask you, tell them, I was chosen as a sign for you to show you what is going to happen to you. And we can see that in the life of a prophet, the Lord uses always symbolic action. And we also are called to be prophets on our time. We are called to be prophets to the people that we love, to our friends, to our neighbors, to everyone that we know. The Lord calls us to be His servant and to do His work and His will. And we, like Prophet Ezekiel, need to be open to do whatever the Lord wants from us. I'm sure Ezekiel did not want to be the sign for the Lord and to show the people of Israel that they were going to exile, that they, the exile was upon them. But he obeyed the Lord. Ezekiel is one example that a man that obeyed the Lord, that did God's will. Doesn't matter if it was good news that he was asked to give or bad news. We can see in the life of every prophet that we have been reading this past months, but especially with Ezekiel. He was th this man that did not ask the Lord why. Like we saw in Isaiah, he said, I have unclean lips, I can't prophesy. And the Lord cleaned his lips. Uh, Jeremiah said, I'm too young, I don't know how to do it. And the Lord helped Jeremiah. So both of them, we can see, they put something they said they were incapable of being prophets, but the Lord gave them all the graces that they needed. But Ezekiel, we don't see at any point in his prophets, he puts anything like before the Lord is saying that he is not able, that he is not capable of it. And he is this prophet open and willing to do God's will. And in this first reading today, we see wasn't a good message. He was called to act in the way that the people are going to live later, that was in exile. And we can ask in our lives if we are open to do God's will as Ezekiel did. Are we open to be the sign to people, to live and to act according God's will, to be those signs, those prophets to our neighbors, to our brothers and sisters? Are we open to that? or? We always tell the Lord that we can't, that we are not worthy, that we are not capable of it. We today should look at Prophet Ezekiel and ask ourselves where we need to be more open to God's will. In the responsorial psalm today, Psalm 78, verses 56 to 62, we see that when the, we see the psalm is saying, they tested and rebelled against the Most High God, and did not observe His decrees, but turned away and acted treacherously like their fathers. They twisted like a deceitful bull, for they provoked Him to anger with their high places. They moved Him to jealousy with their grievance, graven sins. When God heard, He was full of wrath. And he utterly rejected Israel. He forsook his dwelling at Shiloh, the tent where he dwelt among them, and delivered his power to captivity, his glory to the hand of the foe. He gave his people over to the sword and vented his wrath on his heritage. In the psalm today, we see the psalmist saying that the Lord allowed the people to suffer. The Lord allowed Israel to go to exile, to go through sufferings because they were rebelled. So they rebelled against the Most High God. And what we can learn from this psalm today is many times the Lord will allow bad things or difficult things to happen to us. 
not because he wants, not because he's happy with this, but because it's through hardship, through hard times that we find the Lord. He many times is trying to prevent us from suffering and from hard times because of our sins. And he's trying and trying. But when we don't listen to him, he allows things to happen because it's through the hardships that we will turn our hearts back to the Lord. And we can see kind of an example in the gospel today. Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 18 verses 21 until chapter 19 verse 1. And the Lord says, no, verse 21. Then Peter came up to Jesus and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the, rec the reckoning, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow servants, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servants fell down and plead with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison till he should pay the debt. He, until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what he what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their lord all that had happened. The, then his lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that because you plead with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And with anger his lord delivered him to the jailers with, till he should pay all his debts. And also my heavenly father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Now, when Jesus had finished these sayings, he went away from Galilee and entered the region of Judea beyond the Jordan. So in this gospel today, we learn this lesson of forgiveness. Peter is start asking, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother who sinned against me? How many times should I forgive? And that's a question that all of us have in our hearts. How many times shall I forgive this brother or sister their sinned against me? I'm always forgiven and this person is always doing this again, doing and to or talking bad things about me again. And Jesus said, I do not say you seven times and seven in the Bible is the number of completion, the number of perfectness. So he said not only seven times, but 70 times 7. And 70 times 7 show us that forgiveness has no limit. So we are multiplying the perfect number, the number of completeness. So forgiveness has no end, has no limit. We have always to forgive. And then the Lord gives us this parable of forgiveness showing that this Lord, this king, came and w wants to 
settle accounts with his servants and call one by one. And when this first servant asked him mercy, the servant asked him only a time for him to pay his debts. And what the Lord, what this, his Lord said to him, okay, I forgive everything. He had pity on him and said, you don't have to pay me anything. But as soon as his, he left, his Lord, his master, he found a fellow servant and he could not act with the same mercy. His Lord acted with mercy on him, but then he could not act with the same mercy. And then his Lord asked him, say, why did you not ask with, act with mercy as I did with you? And we don't see an answer from, his, from this servant. It is not written what was his answer. Why can't we act with mercy on our fellow brothers and sisters with the same mercy that the Lord has for us? The Lord show us mercy throughout our days. And I'm sure we can recognize it. But when we are asked to act with mercy to others, is there when we fail? Is there when we don't show the mercy that we received from our Lord and God? And that's the lesson from this, this gospel today, to act with mercy with others. The death of the first servant was of a great amount, was an exaggerated amount to show us that our Lord and God have mercy on us in our big sins and everything that is unpayable. But the debt of the second servant to the first servant was a very small amount. And the first servant was asked to act with the same mercy, the same pity that he received from his Lord and God, and he could not act like that. He did not show mercy. He wasn't this channel to his fellow servant to show that, to act, I received, I just received mercy and now I act with mercy with you. He was not able to do that. And we can see, we, as we could see in the life of the prophet Ezekiel, he was this channel, this open channel that allowed God's word to go through him. And he was this sign of God's message. This first servant was asked to be a sign of God's forgiveness and God's mercy and he could not. That's a lesson for us today and that we could ask ourselves, where do I fail to show God's forgiveness and God's mercy? Where am I today? How am I showing God's forgiveness, the great love that God has for me that forgave all of my sins as huge as they were and I need to show and forgive my fellow brothers and sisters, forgive others with the same love and forgiveness that the Lord has for, for the humanity. We are called, like Ezekiel, to be those signs for people, to show that we received mercy and then we give mercy. We received forgiveness and we give forgiveness. I would like to leave you today with this quote of St. John Paul II. St. John Paul II says, Forgiveness is above all a personal choice, a decision of the heart to go against the natural instinct to pay back with evil, evil by evil. Forgiveness is above all a personal choice, a decision of the heart to go against the natural instinct to pay back evil with evil. Forgiveness is a choice. We need to choose forgiveness, to choose to show forgiveness to others as the Lord had forgiven on us. So may the Lord bless us and may this gospel today, his word today, help us to understand and to show us where we need to improve in forgiveness and in mercy. And may we choose forgiveness. May we choose to pay back our brothers and sisters with love. No, what, 
not with evil, but with love. May the Lord bless us today with his forgiveness and his mercy. Amen.